Hey all my future buyers and sellers out there, I am here to teach you more than you knew before about the real estate process. And let me tell you what, it is all about presentation. Not only when you put your house up for sale and it looks gorgeous, but also when an agent gives you a listing presentation to ensure that you hire them. So bust out your grading rubric because I'm about to show you mine. Hey, it's Ella with Ella Estate Realty and welcome back to my channel. Now, before I convince you, your friends, your family, your parents, and strangers on the street that you should all be listing your house with me, I'm gonna have to ask you to hit that subscribe button so you never miss any real estate knowledge. And if you love real estate as much as I do, definitely leave me some love and some likes on this video. Now, as for today's topic, we're talking all about a listing presentation. So I'm completely curious if you guys have been through one, sat through one, listened to any of that and ended up hiring the real estate agent afterwards let me know in the comments down below because I love a good story <laughs> kicking off my listing presentation I actually break it into two appointments uh, sorry not sorry I like being prepared and I want to give you specific numbers and if I don't know what's going on inside your house the first time that I sit down with you to give you numbers then I don't think they're gonna be as accurate as they could be so I like to do a 15 minute walkthrough of the home where it's me and the homeowners they're telling me more about the house and I'm jotting down notes feverishly about different things that I think would be value-adding actions or things that I think will really benefit us in the comps when I run them um, um, then it goes into the listing presentation that's about an hour and that's more in-depth strategies customized to that exact house. That being said, if I just finished their walkthrough a couple days ago and now we're at the listing presentation appointment, I like to start all my appointments with gratitude thanking them for the opportunity in uh, allowing me to present with them that day. And also I like to remind them first and foremost that I am there to be their personal representative and I have their best interests in mind through the whole thing, uh, the whole process. And also that as multiple offers start to roll in, I am there to protect them every step of the way. Now, communication, efficiency, trust, these are the three words that I've built my business on and I try to transcend that through everything that I do. And the same is applied when I'm trying to explain to sellers in how the best way to get their house sold is. Try to speak as concisely as possible and even a little creative to get the points across. I love the simplified explanation of it takes five rights to get your house sold. Now the first right is getting your house right. That means getting it in tip top shape, model condition even. Second is yard right. I mean if uh, HGTV has taught me anything it's all about the curb appeal. Third is getting your marketing right, getting in front of as many buyers as possible. Fourth is pricing your house right, not only just picking an online evaluation, but being strategic in what price you put it up for sale for. And lastly, the fifth one is picking your trusted real estate agent, right? Making sure that we are a great match professionally and that we'll continue on that relationship through the entire transaction and years to come. Now, speaking of communication and being concise, I try to set expectations for the appointment. Sometimes it can be a little overwhelming thinking you're gonna sit for an hour to talk about your house. But really, I'm just gonna touch base on the five rights and how it benefits them and their house. I'm gonna show the CMA that I have prepared, which is competitive market analysis. And then lastly, of course, is the documentation, all the paperwork, seeing if you have any questions and getting a schedule built with some deadlines that work with your schedule. Because at the end, of the day my biggest goals is that I want you to turn to me with any and all questions you have so I can be your number one trusted real estate resource but also as it goes for selling your house I just want it to be sold as quick as possible for your most favorable terms so just keeping that in mind as we move forward now going back to the five rights, the first one is house right and the second one is yard right, but both of those really are just presentation. And I try to make it a relatable topic with my sellers and ask, you know, have you guys ever seen the cooking channel, those competitions where they go head to head? And of course they probably have. <laughs> and then the next question is, well, they don't always get eliminated off of taste, do they? Sometimes it's presentation. And I would hate for your house you get where I'm coming from, to get eliminated off of presentation because stats show that buyers buy based off of the exterior of the house, um, 12%. And then the interior of the house only plays a 10% factor in that. So 
22%, we can control. The other 78 is predetermined, the square footage, the school district, how many bedrooms, bathrooms, things like that. So if we can only control 22%, then don't you wanna do as much as possible to make sure your house shines? And that is kind of me letting them in on, you know, this is what it takes to get it on the market and get the most money out of it. You want your house to look the best in model condition. So even though I'm Ella with Ella Estate Realty, I actually work under a company called John L. Scott, if you've ever heard of it. It's a pretty dominating force in the Pacific Northwest, but has partners worldwide. So I can refer you to a real estate agent anywhere with extra certifications, just let it be known. But anyways, I have to give them credit because they call out different things in the process and simplify the explanations, the five rights, gotta give them credit, but also they have a thing called market rate day one and my interpretation of this is everything that needs to happen before the listing goes live that's like the end point but within that timeline we have your to-do list and my to-do list and the split is the photography and I point this out because before the photography happens we want to make sure all your repairs are done your decluttering depersonalization deep cleaning and staging is done and then the photography takes place and it's kind of a domino effect after that where I'm getting all the marketing ready, hitting the deadlines of scheduling everything else before the listing goes live. So going back to your guys' to-do list, I touch on every single one of those individually and see if the client, the seller, has anything in mind that they want to accomplish. So just like I said, you wanna get all the repairs done, which is really called out in the seller disclosure form that outlines every question possible you could think of about your house and reminds you of those projects that you put off. Um, another is deep cleaning. We wanna make sure that not only are you mopping and vacuuming the regular, but this is deep cleaning like pressure pressure washing the hard surfaces, um, washing the windows interior and exterior, just things you never get to. Next is depersonalizing, decluttering. I absolutely am a fan of this. This is why houses don't get sold because this is not done. So uh, I have a little saying, I want people to think that Martha Stewart and Tim the Toolman Taylor live here and everything is in its rightful place because when they look through the cabinetries and drawers, because buyers will, I want them to think, wow, the owners are just so meticulous. They've kept this place in great condition. There must be nothing wrong with this house. I want it. And they put in their offer. And then speaking of taking things off the walls and putting things away, um, you're probably gonna start packing, which is great. I really encourage sellers to do this during this time, but make sure that you're stacking everything organized pretty much in the garage so it doesn't block anything for showings. And also you don't wanna block any big uh, machinery within the house. So the water heater, the furnace, things like that, because they'll need to be inspected. And lastly is staging, just getting it in picture perfect condition, like I said, for the photography because my favorite stat is 90% of people out there can't imagine an empty room with furniture. So we wanna help them out. Now, whether you want to hire a professional, get a consultation, or just do it yourself, I back all my sellers and whatever they want to do to get their house sold, but I am a big believer in staging. So definitely wanna take advantage of that. So like I said, repairs, deep cleaning, decluttering, depersonalization, and staging, all of these to get it photography ready. Now, next talking point is your digital presence or that of your house online when we put it up for sale because we are finding that 95% of all buyers start their home search online. So I hire a company as the photographer called Virtuance and I leave it up to my clients whether they wanna use them or not, but I know they're dependable and I know their schedule and they're partnered with John L. Scott, so quality is definitely in mind. I also am gonna take care of this cost, but also bring on somebody to do drone work because I want everybody to see the above the community above the house the surrounding areas i'll have a 3d tour done so people are able to show themselves around the house uh, through the internet at any time of day kind of like an open house do a walkthrough and lastly a 3d schematic to make sure that they see where all the doors are located so there's no questions so 
when someone actually goes to book a showing and maybe disrupts your day or we have showings back to back these are the most serious clients because their questions have already been answered with all the footage all the photography um, done before this and side note i ask my sellers to be present when the photographer is there because i want to get their feedback i want them to be involved but also sometimes the photographer needs to move some of the furniture around and i don't want to do that without asking or uh, hurt anything in the house as well so i would schedule it around my seller's schedule to make sure that it works best for them the next right up is market right and i love this one because it takes a little creativity but i like to open the conversation with asking the sellers if they had any form of marketing in mind or advertisement i should say because i like to look at the difference between advertising and marketing advertising is the tools that you use the sign in the front yard the flyers things like that but marketing is the strategy that you implement and that's what i'm there to do and from um, a geography standpoint, how I implement my marketing plan, I like to look at first the house, you know, within it, we're doing staging, photography, 3D tours, and the schematic. And then we go to the exterior, we're doing the drone work, we have the sign in the yard, the flyers, all printed and beautiful. And then we um, host an open house where we invite others, but also um, in the neighbors and push it out through the MLS. Then we take it to a 10 mile radius where I boost your listing through Facebook and we're able to choose the 10 mile radius around your house. And you can also share this with your friends and family. I'll share it with my friends and family to get in front of as many people as possible. And then I take it statewide. So as soon as it gets through push through the MLS, every real estate agent in the state is able to see this house listed and countrywide, worldwide, it gets pushed out to those Zillow.com, Realtor, all those things. And then lastly, I'm with John L. Scott. Like I mentioned, they have worldwide partners. So everyone within their network is alerted that your house is for sale. So really, we got you from all angles worldwide from your house out. And I just want uh, sellers to know that our end goal is to get in front of as many prospective buyers as possible. Now we're getting to the fourth right and that would be price right. This is where communication is really key, honestly. Figuring out what sellers think their house is worth, what's going on in the market, and figuring out a strategy to go along with that. And then knowing the difference between, you know, how much your house is worth how much you think it's worth and how much you should price it for because these are three completely different numbers sometimes. Uh, and then with pricing, figuring out the mindset of do you wanna do it below market value, above market value, at fair market value, what are the comps showing? And that's when I bust out the CMA so we're able to see what your direct competitors are in the active market, what's gone pending at what price, and what's sold in the last couple months so we can see you know, what the market used to be and be able to figure out a number from there. So like I said, you can definitely find evaluations a lot of places on the internet, but sometimes it's good to have somebody in person, a human to talk with back and forth, but I changed that and this is a little old, but as soon as I do that, what will it come out to be? Because the online evaluations are a great starting point, but sometimes like throwing a dart at a dartboard, you don't know if they're up, down, or sideways. Dun, 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 dun. We made it to the last right, which is picking the right trusted real estate agent for you. Not only is this an emotional roller coaster, but you want a good professional match too. You want somebody that knows their contracts line by line or when you're in a multiple offer situation can explain which one is the best for you and legally help you through it. Um, also, like I said, emotional, somebody that can stand by you, knows the ups and downs of the market and you can just trust through the whole thing. And now the cat's out of the bag. You know exactly what to expect in a listing presentation with me, but just know that it's always customized to each client. Everybody's different sellers that are possibly interviewing uh, real estate agents and they don't know what to expect. Maybe I set some standards and if you are in Washington State, I definitely would love to work with you. If you have any questions, you can always reach me at my website, ellaestaterealty.com. That concludes the video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you're having an outrageous day.